This is Desalony, and welcome to episode four of 90s Overlooked Underheard. So, how's it going? Uh, today, we're going to be doing the first single album uh, video of this series. And uh, before I even start to talk about um, the album itself, I'd like to talk a little bit about the artist. And to do that, I need to just jump beyond the 90s. So in 2006, uh, NPR, which is National Public Radio, it's kind of like the American equivalent of, I guess, something like Radio 4, a big uh, publicly owned national broadcaster. Uh, they um, made a list um, of their 10 greatest living songwriters and I'm looking at the list right here and uh, the top few are exactly as you might expect um, so Bob Dylan's at number one um, Tom Waits is at number two just ahead of Paul McCartney at number three uh, some may argue those should be flipped around or something but um, and number four was Bruce Springsteen but at number five is the guy I want to talk about today and that is Vic Chestnut. And I want to talk specifically about his album from 1991. June of 1991 was the release date. And it's called West of Rome. So, um, a little first about Vic. Uh, he, was, he was born and raised for the early part of his life in Florida to adopted parents and moved at a young age to Georgia. Uh, as he was growing up, he kind of got into music and was um, playing in local bands, but he was involved in a uh, car crash at the age of 18, um, whilst driving under the influence, which left him uh, wheelchair bound. Um, there are many, um, resources on the internet that would describe him as paraplegic but in his own words he was essentially quadriplegic um so he yeah as i said he was uh, confined to a wheelchair but he had very 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 limited movement in both his arms um which essentially led to him kind of completely having to relearn how to play guitar um using a very unique very reduced playing style, very simple strumming style, um, very spare, chiefly on a kind of a nylon strung acoustic. Uh, Vic picked up a very early kind of supporter in Michael Stipe of R.E.M. who would see him playing locally a lot uh, in Athens, Georgia. And in fact, Michael Stipe uh, produced uh, his first two albums, his debut, Little, in 1990 and this album that we're talking about today west of rome in 1991 um vic went on to release a string of albums he was very prolific more than a dozen albums over the the following 18 or so years but um in 2009 um facing mounting financial pressure and some serious health issues that he was struggling with. Um, he had large uh, medical bills to cover and there were surgeries he needed. And uh, on Christmas Day 2009, he took his own life. Uh, just a tragedy, just a real tragedy. So, um, yes, West of Rome. Um, as I said, it was produced by Michael Stipe, released in 1991 on the small Texas hotel label. So I guess uh, if you were to define this record uh, in terms of any kind of genre, you would nowadays call it Americana. Um, it's very spare, 
very intimate folk country inflected um and at the center of it all is 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 vic chestnut's voice which is this incredible instrument uh, it, he could go from a kind of a sweet kind of very plaintive kind of ch almost childlike voice into this kind of hoarse cracked kind of drunken bellowing but the words his wordplay is just incredible it was second to none deeply kind of uh, literary literate lyrics dense wordy odd rhythms and cadences and very very funny uh, even though a lot of his subject matter was personal and difficult and quite dark there's always this kind of mordant humor at the center of it where he's trying to puncture um this mood that he has around him i think in terms of his voice uh, it, it's difficult to find an exact precedent but if you looked at some of the kind of country artists of the 70s maybe like uh graham parsons or or, or john prine or i guess particularly willie nelson who also had this strange um kind of warbling hiccupy vocal style which took you places that no one else did i think vic vic definitely has that so uh for west of rome the the the, the backing that that vic was using was as i said before quite spare um very low-key kind of drums and a little bass um occasional cello uh, some electric guitar the odd little bit of keyboard but it's basically this is Vic's show he's kind of front and center his voice his guitar um he would go on to release fuller albums with 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 bands with um uh, a, a wide array of musicians and uh it could be that if if you like west of rome you will explore further into his back catalog but west of rome definitely catches him at that kind of uh quite spare, quite intimate um, moment in his kind of songwriting career. Um, the music is, yes, as I say, very folk and country tinged. Um, and in fact, I think it's easier to just kind of look at key tracks in terms of West of Rome, more in terms of what he was singing, because the, the real interest in, in, in any of Vic's work is his voice and his words and west of rome is full of these kind of little vignettes these little stories um on sponge there's almost a kind of a uh, this kind of resigned anger this kind of um fatalism he sings um that the world is a sponge yeah, it's like we all get sucked in in the end we're all reduced to nothing it's quite a bleak song but again very beautiful um, on a song like stupid preoccupations the mood is much 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 lighter it's a warmer and funnier song he sings the line that they got organizations for people like me with stupid preoccupations and he manages to get this very odd cadence and rhythm on the line preoccupations which it just it just it just lifts the song it makes you smile it's like the self-deprecation kind of just overcomes itself and he's kind of raising a glass he's toasting everyone who who's ever felt like him or who's ever put up with someone like him another kind of warmer song or at least initially warmer song is panic pure uh one of the best songs on the album um which again seems to hark back to these kind of warmer memories these childhood recollections this is where the ch kind of almost the childlike element in vic chestnut comes comes forward and he's he sings about holding up a sparkler at, at a fourth of july spectacular and um he's kind of he's kind of telling you something about himself but pulling back he's basically saying you know 
we were all children. We all grew up. We all have these memories. We all have these experiences. And in fact, he says the line, so all you observers in your scrutiny, don't cut my scars like tree rings. It's almost as if he's challenging people to look past him and see the child there. It's a very beautiful song. Uh, the song Miss Mary is very different. This is like kind of a like a, a quicker, more more nimble song. Um, something in it reminds me a little of uh, the Leonard Cohen song, um, "The Partisan." It's kind of it's kind of a, a kind of a an almost a cantering kind of galloping kind of energy to it, and it tells the story of this kind of fleeting sexual encounter that that the Vic had, and um, his voice on this song is at its most nimble. It's it's soaring during the little uh, chorus sections um but it's really animated very like i say nimble this song just feels live it's a good song in contrast florida the song brings everything down to this funereal kind of pace and it's kind of this ode to the state that he was born in and it it kind of paints almost a a beautiful picture of it but kind of highlights the kind of the the grubbiness and the the kind of the sordid heart there um it sounds very conflicted but it does feature a, a very telling line regarding suicide where he sings and i respect a man who goes to where he wants to be, even if he wants to be dead. And through his career, uh, Vic would touch on the subject of suicide in many songs. Um, real kind of portents of what would eventually take him. But I think the the centerpiece of the album, the song, which is possibly the greatest song that Vic Chestnut ever wrote and performed, is the song Lucinda Williams. Uh, a little history about the song is that, which I've picked up from various documentaries, uh, it was it was written in a kind of a drunken haze. He doesn't remember writing it. He, he got back and he sat at the kitchen table and he wrote and sung the song and went to bed. Completely forgot about it. And woke up the next morning to find the whole thing written on a sheet of paper on the kitchen table. And it's just a beautiful, a beautiful evocative song with some of his most memorable lines. He says, I settled down on a hurt as big as Robert Mitchum and listened to Lucinda Williams. I mean... It's just such a wonderful observational style, such a such a great lyric. And his vocal performance renders some of the lines just even more poignant. He sings the line, My heroes are off in the great beyond. And Listening back, you can't help now but think of Vic in very, very similar terms. This is a fantastic record. There are a handful on this list that I wouldn't just say are overlooked or underheard, but they're pretty essential. And this is one that I would put in the essential list. So uh, once again, down below, some things you um, may choose to do. Um, if you do, just let me know um, if you're liking these videos. Um, this is quite a new experience for me, so I welcome any feedback you have to give me. And uh, in the meantime, uh, I'll see you next time for another episode of 90s Overlooked Underheard. Bye for now.